So if the unique point of view is not the same as message positioning, then how do we define that? What is it that it, like what makes it different from message positioning and how do you apply it to your product and your service? Yeah. So like Deanna just mentioned, this is something that really gets people thinking. So you're challenging that status quo. You're trying to um, get your audience thinking and start to um, put something different out there in the market that's going to get their attention and really make you stand out. Um, A unique point of view is something that really think of it as a stance. Like we all have our own opinion or stance on different topics and your brand can have the same type of thing. It's something that, you know, it can be controversial. Um, It's something that you know, not everybody's going to agree with. And some people might listen to that point of view and say, oh yeah, I don't necessarily see it the same. Um, But at the same time, you're also going to get people who start to understand your point of view and see things through a little bit different lens. And you're going to get people to, again, notice you. And as you're starting to stand out in the crowd, they can start to follow along. And that's really where you start to kind of differentiate yourself from those others in the market. And I think that at Growth Mode Marketing, we really talk about putting that unique point of view out to the right kind of people, the right kind of businesses, which would be your ideal customer profile. These are the people that will agree with you and want to follow along with what it is that your point of view is. As you're developing a unique point of view, you know, personally, I think first you have to identify like who's your ideal customer profile. And how do they think and what do they care about and what are the triggers that make them interested in your product and what are kind of the things happening in their organization that make them ideal 